Boom. We're back. America, if you need more motivation to get off your rocking chair than what's going on in our nation every day today, I don't know what your problem is, but we are in big trouble. Stop sitting around dreaming about utopia and take action. You're listening to America's Voice now. This is segment two in our program. We're going to talk about Ryan, Representative Ryan, the traitor, who's desperate to get us involved in immigration. Paul Ryan ran for vice president. He's under an enormous amount of pressure from his own constituency to revise uh, the, the, the to drop his support for the U.S. immigration revision laws that they're trying to pass. Everything about immigration and this bill is traitorous and treasonous to America. Don't support it in any way, shape, or form. The only way to approach this is in small bites. We do it a little bit at a time. And we don't do a darn thing until the borders are 100% verifiably sealed. Verifiably sealed by a third party who will verify, not Congress, not Department of Homeland Security. We want an independent group who is not paid by government, who is not beholden or answers to government. We want a committee of citizens who will interview Border Patrol and ICE and actually observe border action to verify that border is locked down. Until then, not a single vote. None. Don't even try it. Call your Senate, call your House representative today and tell him no immigration until the borders are independently, verifiably sealed. And an act on your part to vote for that will be construed by your citizens in your state as an act of treason. Tell him in no uncertain terms. Here's the phone number. Write it down. 202 224 3121. Then call the Speaker of the House, John Boner, and tell him that if he votes for this and allows this thing to go through, we're coming after him hot and heavy. He's going to lose his House Speakership seat. He's going to lose his own reelection. And then we're going to charge him criminally with treason. Enough's enough, guys. Let's just start calling this what it is. It is us versus them. And there ain't no middle ground. You're either for us or you're against us. And that's all there is to it. We, the citizens, we, the people, are going to go back and fight against the unconstitutional monsters who have attempted to usurp and steal this nation from us. And we are going to have to take a very, very, very hard line. You're either for us or you're against us. And there ain't no middle ground. He's risking a showdown with the Tea Party, says Bob Dane, an opposition leader. The hell with the Tea Party. He's facing a showdown with America. I'm telling you, we had better make sure that we make it so abundantly clear. I want the same ratio of calls going to the House that are going there about Syria. Why can't we get Americans to stand up and say 500 to 1 against immigration? Stop letting them toe on your emotional uh, strings to beg you to say, we're all that means you want to throw out old men and women and you want to separate babies. That's a bunch of crap. Nobody's advocating that. That's all propaganda and media lies that are being fed to you by these psychophantic tricksters who expect that you are going to do what you're told as a little drug-induced sheeple. Cut that crap out. Get it out of your system. Get it out of your head and change your stand. We are going to have to go to war against our own nation if we allow this to continue. And it's up to you to stop it. We can only do this with massive, peaceful, civil disobedience. The alternative to that, folks, is so bad, so ugly, you don't even want to go there. This all depends on you. And you're either going to get with us And you're going to get with the patriots, not the conservatives. Conservative means you want to conserve what we got. Let me tell you something. If you want to conserve what we have now, a virtual police state of surveillance, monitoring, 
minuscule laws that are punish, punishing people, robbing them of their money, their land, their property, their real estate, their, their lives, and their freedom, then you go ahead and conserve that. But what that means is that you are against us. That's the new mantra. Start grasping it. Start realizing it. Don't call yourself a conservative. You're a patriot. Don't call yourself a Tea Party member. Call yourself a patriot. Because the Tea Party has been enveloped into the wolf fold by the Republicans. So stop. Start acting and dealing with this the proper way. Make sure that you are doing the right thing by our nation. You're either a patriot or you're a player in their camp. And this is a separation of powers, a separation of of state right here. You're either going to be for the patriots or you're against us. Oh, I get it. Our numbers are small today. But let me tell you something. They are growing by the minute. You want proof? I just ran over in our last segment. The calls are between 500 to 1 against and 1,000 to 10 against for a going at an intervention in Syria. You see, even Americans who would ordinarily just sit on the couch and in their rocking chairs and eat potato chips and watch Communist News Network and those defunct idiots over at MSLSD got to realize that they are trying to drag us into another war. The real scope and the true nature of this thing is they are they are just tasting Iran coming in on the side of Syria. That gives them every excuse to then go to war against Iran. That's the game plan, guys. Don't you see it? And you know who's promoting it? The Arabs, OPEC, and Israel. They want us to go to war and fight a proxy war as mercenaries on their behalf. <clears throat> Meanwhile, they're using all of this to cover up the whole immigration bill, which is wending its way through the House very, very quickly and quietly. Well, let me tell you something. You need to get up off your hind legs today and get on your phone and tell your House representative no on Syria and no on immigration. And the mantra, the, the line for immigration is real simple. No immigration changes until the borders are verifiably independently verifiably sealed and all illegals have registered that's it that's that's really not that complicated guys i don't want to hear any more emotional cries about babies are going to be crying rape is going to happen let me tell you something if you want to fall for that fear-mongering garbage you go right ahead and do that but i'm not fooled for a minute and neither are millions and millions of other patriots in the united states Immigration is simple. They're leaving our borders wide open for a very, very clear and distinct reason. We have sealed the border between North and South Korea for the last 60 years. It's so tight, you can't find a gnat's rear end. Nobody gets across that border. You know why? Because they built a no man's zone in between, a dead man's zone. And it's a fence that has, that has uh, uh, mines and stuff in it. Here's the problem. They want this border wide open for a very clear and specific reason. And I'm going to tell you what it is right now. We know for a fact that we are seeing tons and tons of people coming across that border who are not Mexican and South American nationals. What they are 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 Middle Easterners and they are Al-Qaeda and they are Iraqis and they are Iranians who are coming over here and creating sleeper cells in this country. And you know why the government wants to let it happen? Because when the brown stuff hits the oscillating wooden blades, here's what they're going to do. They're going to use that as an excuse to clamp down the iron steel fist around America. That's the plan. Stop pretending you don't get it. If you don't get it, I don't know why. The handwriting is all over the wall. It's all over the screen behind me. It's everywhere. It's at your work. It's at your church. It's at your job. It's at your, at your school. It's on your living room ceiling. It's in your bedroom. It's in your drawers. It's in your car. The writing is everywhere. Just read it. Stop pretending that this is all going to get better and that we're going to have some utopian wonderland in, in, where, where, you know, pink ponies are going to be trotting around in the streets after this is all said and done. 
this is not going to get better. It's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. So you better choose a side now, America. You better grasp a hold of yourself and determine where you stand. This is not going to get better. And it's not going to go away. And they're not going to kick this can down the road. This is the can that they've been kicking the financial and the immigration and all the other cans down the road to get to. Total, absolute authoritarianism with you in their grasp. What do you think all the surveillance is for? Come on. Really? You think it's just for, for, for the, the minuscule, infinitesimal uh, risk that you might be blown up by, by two stupid kids with, a, with a, a pressure cooker? Come on, man. You know what? More kids die and more children alone die every year falling off their bicycles. More children die every year from drowning in swimming pools than all Americans killed put together by all terrorist attacks globally. Now, you tell me the real risk. The truth of the matter is, this is all a lie being perpetrated to give them the opportunity and the excuse to put a steel fist around your neck. And when the, when the, the, the hand clenches, I'm telling you, it's going to be too late. Don't wait until the barbed wire is up and the blood is running in the streets before you decide to take a stand. That's it. It's that simple. Take a stand now while we can do this peacefully. While we can massively peacefully be be civilly disobedient in 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 a format that forces government to stop beating us. When you are the slave and you say to the master, Master, please stop beating me. You are giving him the implied consent to continue because you're telling him that he it's up to him to stop. Only when you reach up and seize that hand and look him in the eye and say, if you beat me again, I will kill you, are you in control. Not until. If you want to keep acquiescing to the bully, you go right ahead and do that. But you know what? You're risking America for the rest of us. You're risking America for your own children. You're risking our republic to tyranny, authoritarianism, and totalitarianism. Fascism. That's what this is. Go look it up in the dictionary. If you don't know the definition of fascism, go look it up. Constantly finding a phantom enemy to keep the the, the minds of the public occupied. Constantly uh, stealing their money through confiscatory taxation. Constantly closing industry down until government is the one in control of everything. Why do you think that they want a single-payer unified health care system? Because if you own health care, you own the people. It's that simple. If you own the food supply, you own the people. Why do they allow Monsanto to have crops that only Monsanto can, that you have to pay Monsanto a royalty to grow? Because once they own the food supply, they own you. You'll do anything to eat. Anything. You'll betray your neighbor. You'll rat out your mother. You'll burn your own sister and your own brother to feed your kids. And don't think you won't. We are stepping into a tragedy and and, and a period in time like our history, in fact, global history has never seen. The tyranny that we are going to experience in the coming, in the next couple of years is going to out, is going to outshine anything that we have seen in any outrageous time in the past. Stalin was a, was a Cub Scout compared to these guys. Hitler was a wee blow. He wasn't even a Cub Scout compared to what these guys have planned for you. Between the United Nations and the Obama administration and the elitists who control these groups, they seek your demise. That's it. They want your demise if you are above the age of about 40 or 45 because you are an expendable, resource-gobbling parasite. They don't want you to live above the age of 40 or 45. You can't work hard enough. And, you're, and if you are above the age of 18 or 20, you've already formulated mental opinions, and they don't want you. Why do you think they're going after your children in schools? 
Why do you think that they're involving and, and, and indoctrinating your children in school systems? Because their minds are soft and malleable. Why do you think the military won't take anybody above about 25 years old? Because they want people who are easily bent and swayed to their way of thinking. And once you hit above 25, you've been kicked around by the world a few too many times to buy every song and dance that you hear. It's that simple, guys. Use a little common sense and you'll grasp the idea real quickly. This ain't rocket science. This is a psyops war being perpetrated against America. They're utilizing the Ministry of Propaganda to fool you into thinking immigration is a good thing, that we're doing the right humanitarian thing. Let me tell you something. Our borders are sovereign. And we have a right to seal our borders down and say, before we swallow and before we eat any more, we're entitled to chew and swallow what we've got. Because if we don't, we will do what? Choke. It's that simple. And it's inexcusable for this government to have left this border so blatantly exposed. They say, oh, it's going to cost billions of dollars to build a fence. Let me tell you something. These guys lost billions of dollars yesterday on the rounding era of their spreadsheet. Billions. They could afford between Monday and Wednesday to build a fence that would be 50 feet high, border to border, ocean to ocean. And line it with landmines and claymores. And they could afford it between Monday and Wednesday. It's that simple. All they got to do is spend the money. They won't. You know why? Because they want the borders exposed. They want them porous. Because the more people come across that border, one, the more solidified their power. And two, the few tag teams who get in here who are true sleeper cells will wreak havoc in the United States, which will give them the plausible excuse to clamp down and declare whatever extraordinary extra-constitutional limitations they want to place upon you. That's what it's all about. Everything else is marketing. Smell it, taste it, feel it. That's truth. All these other radio stations, all these TV programs out there, all of these newscasts out there, they are feeding you pabulum. They are giving you chalk to eat. It is tasteless. It has zero value. It has no nutritional value to you. It is just designed to keep you busy and occupied. Misdirected, misinformed. That's what it's all about. You have an obligation to be smart, to be clear, to be concise, to understand and to think critically. If you're not doing those things, you are useless to us, this nation, your family, your county, your city, your community, your neighbors, your friends, your church, your school. Pick it. You are the enemy if you're not for us. And I mean to tell you, we are at a for us and against us window. There's no middle more, there's no more middle ground. You can't sit on a fence any longer and say, well, I, you know, I'm a little on this side and I'm a little on the stop. There is no more of that. Time's up. You've had 50 years to sit on that fence and try to figure out where you're going to go. If you haven't made up your mind by now, that's on you. But the simple truth is the time for sitting there and wavering and, oh, I believe in this a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm politically, uh, you know, conservative, but I'm socially liberal. And, I, you know, hey, stop all that. Stop it. The truth is this. Federal government should be microscopic. In other words, to you, it should be invisible. You should have to hunt for it with a microscope to find it. No, instead, you want to let them dictate what kind of seatbelt you ought to wear, what kind of diaper your kid ought to wear, what kind of light bulb ought to be in your roof. You want to let them dictate what your food should look like, what your drugs should look like. You want to let them tell you you should be taking handfuls of these pharmaceutical, mind-bending, and mind-altering drugs. You want to let them dictate the rules to you about everything. Stop allowing yourselves to be ridden like horses. You're being raped, and your rapist is laughing at you the whole way. That's the truth, America. Microscopic federal government. So small, so invisible, we can't find them unless we look for them. 
That means the end of thousands upon thousands of three-letter agencies that are completely operating outside the Constitution. When you talk about state government, it should be miniature. In other words, you should actually have to look for it as well. Maybe not with a microscope, but state government should be miniature. It should have almost zero impact in your day-to-day life. Your life should be spent, one, pursuing your own benefits and your own interests, your own, your own family's interests, building and designing, creating, wealth building, being a benefit to your neighbors and your friends and your community. Instead, we are sucked dry by confiscatory taxes that draw 50% of, your, of every dollar you make. No wonder we have poor in the country. We can't even afford to help our own poor. Because the government's taking it away. And then they pretend to give it all back to us. They don't give you back a tenth of what you give them. So they get your money and they scrape 90% off the top and then give it back to you and say, now it comes with strings attached. America, is is that the life you envision? Is that the life that our founders envisioned for us? Is that the life you've envisioned for your child? A life of slavery chained to the drudgery of 50%, 60s. What are we going to do when the taxes hit 60? What are we going to do when they hit 70? What are we going to do when they say, we're going to just tell everybody what they need to do because we don't have enough job distribution in this one area or that area? Don't you smell the police state growing around you? It's like bamboo. You can watch it grow. Every day, it's another tsunami of abuse, another tsunami of tyranny, another tsunami of of betrayal, another tsunami of extra-constitutional activity. They know they're violating the law, and they don't care. For you not to care means that you're in agreement with that. Silence is acquiescence. Silence is agreement. Your silence, your lack of participation, your apathy is causing our nation to dissolve. What are you going to do about it? I get it. You come home from work. You're tired. You're hungry. Your kids want your attention. They need homework help. Your your wife's got the lawn to cut for you. Your husband says, hey, I just got home. Why isn't there any dinner ready? Life's busy. You know why your life is so busy? You know why your wife is working? Because she can't afford to stay home. Because you need 50% of what you earn now instead of the 7 or 8% that it used to be. And in the meantime, they're diluting the dollars in your pocket so fast that now $100 is worth less than what $1 used to be a mere 75 years ago. They're draining us through inflation. It's a hidden tax. Not only are you paying 50% in taxes, but you're paying another 20 or 30% in hidden inflation. You want to know why you're broke? You want to know why you can't afford a new car? You want to know why you can't afford to take your kid and put them into a private school where they might actually get a real education? Because you're being drained. You're being bled. You are like a dog who is so laden with ticks that they are bleeding you out. The ticks now outweigh the dog. Is there a legitimate place for charity? Absolutely. Is there a legitimate place for charity sponsored and paid for by government? No! You want to be charitable? You be charitable out of the goodness of your own heart. But once you take it from me, that's called theft. It's no longer charity. Redistribution of my wealth, redistribution of your wealth, is theft. Redistribution of our nation through immigration is theft. Theft of our sovereignty. Theft of our right to vote. Theft of our right to have a say in how government operates. Theft of our resources to put them through school. Theft of our resources when we've got to pay for their hospitalization. All right. I know, I'm hot today. Our next segment is going to be UN and how they have actually come out and demanded, I mean demanding, that we 
and Obama specifically nullify Stand Your Ground. You know what? Who do these people think they are? First of all, Obama can't nullify a darn thing. Only we can nullify. Secondly, who are they to tell anybody to nullify anything? Stand Your Ground is a legitimate defensive tactic, and every American has the right to defend themselves, their home, their life, their liberty, and their family with anything they've got. Yeah, you want an M1 Abrams tank? Buy it. 